Hi, it's Michael from Better Marks and Maths, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to write the remainders when using short division, how to write them as fractions. So, how many choose in three, and the answer is one, and the remainder is one, and you put that one over whatever this number here is, and in this case, it's two. I'm just going to show you how to do it for these ones, and, and then at the end of the lesson, I'm going to show you why that becomes a two. In example two, how many twos in five? How many twos in five? There's two, and there's one left over. So two remainder one, except I don't want to write it as a remainder. I want to write it as a fraction, so it's going to be one over two. Example three, how many threes in 49? How many threes in four? There's one, with one left over. How many threes in 19? There's six, with one left over, and that would be 1 over 3 this time, so 16 and 1 third. So just coming back to these, how many 2's in 3? There's 1 and a half 2's in 3. How many 2's in 5? There's 2 and a half 2's in 5. And how many 3's in 49? There's 16 and 1 third 3's in 49. How many 4's in 414? How many 4's in 4? There's 1. How many 4's in 1? There's none. And carry that 1 because you haven't used it. How many 4s in 14? There's 3. 3 4s are 12, so there's going to be 2 left over. Now that's going to be 2 over 4, and you need to be able to simplify this fraction if you can, and 2 quarters can be written as 1 half, so what you would really want to write there as your answer would be 1 half like that. And that's just by getting the numbers in 2 quarters and dividing both of them by 2. So when you have two quarters and you divide both those numbers by two, two divided by two is one, and four divided by two is two. So how many fours in 414? The answer is 103 and one half. Example five, how many fives in 627? How many fives in six? There's one with one left over. How many fives in 12? There's two with two left over. How many fives in 27? There's five, and there's a remainder of two, so it's going to be two over five. So how many fives in 627? There's 125 and two fifths. How many sixes in 785? So how many sixes in seven? There's one, with one left over. How many sixes in 18? There's three, with none left over. How many sixes in five? There's none. So you've got to put a zero there. And what I was saying, or started to say in the last video, once you've got an answer over a number, there should be an answer over every number till you get to that last number in the sum. A lot of students uh, leave this zero out because they're not sure what to do because six doesn't go into five, and then they go 13 remainder five. But you've got to have an answer on top of every answer. So how many sixes in five? The answer is zero. And then because you haven't used that five, that five is going to be the remainder. And as a fraction, the remainder of five here would be five over six. Example seven, how many sevens in eight, one, two, four? So how many sevens in eight? There's one with one left over. How many sevens in 11? There's one with four left over. How many sevens in 42? There's six with none left over. How many sevens in four? There are none. And again, that four's left over. So the remainder here would be four sevenths, four over this number here. So that's the answer to that one. Example eight. How many eights in this number? So how many eights in nine? There's one with one left over. How many eights in 10? There's one with two left over. How many eights in 23? There are two, two eights is 16. So there's two eights in 23, and from 16 to 23 is seven left over, and that would go there. And then how many eights in 74? Nine eights is 72, so there would be nine, and there would be two remainder here, so a remainder of two. So that would be two over eight, and then you would be expected to simplify this. This would be a correct answer, but at school, you always have to simplify fractions. And if you divide both of these numbers by two, you end up with one quarter. So that's the answer, or the remainder, 
as a simplified fraction here. And example nine, how many nines are in 8108? So how many nines are in eight? There are none. Again, you can put a zero here if you want. I'm going to not put a zero this time. And I have to carry that eight. Some students like to underline it. I like to carry, because that way you're only doing one thing uh, when you don't use a number, you're just carrying it somewhere. And then how many nines in 81? There's nine. And so this answer has to go above this one. And that was the point I was making in the last video when I was talking about starting with a zero and making sure this number goes over that number rather than this number. And the reason is again, so that once you've got an answer over a number in the correct spot, there should be an answer over every number till you get to the end of the sum. So how many nines in 81? There's nine, none left over. How many nines in zero? There are none. How many nines in eight? There are none. And because you haven't used that eight, that eight is going to be eight over nine. And that's the remainder here expressed as a fraction. So now why is it that you can write the remainder as a fraction. So how many twos in three? So when you've got how many twos in three, you've got one, two, three crosses, for example, and really you're doing how many groups of two are there in three? So if I make a group of two like that, how many groups of two in three? There's one group. And then the question to ask is this, what fraction of a group of two is this one here? So this is one half of a group of two even though it's not in a group. So one anything, like one coin, is half of a group of two coins. It doesn't have to be in the group to be half of a group. So if I said with these two crosses, let's uh, say they're coins, all right, you've got two coins, can I have half of your coins? You would give me one coin, so that one coin would be half of the coins. And it's the same with this cross here. That cross is one half of a group of two crosses, even though it's not in a group of crosses. So that's why this one here can be expressed as a fraction, as the fraction one half. Because this sum, how many twos in three, is really asking how many groups of two are there in three crosses, for example? And the answer is one and a half. So this is telling you how many groups there are. So the one is telling you there's one whole group of two crosses, and this one half is telling you there's half a group of two crosses. And this is half of a group of two crosses. If I had how many threes in four, again, if I had something like four crosses, this is really asking how many groups of three are there in four? And there's one group of three in four, so that goes there. And what fraction of a group of three is this one here? And this is one third of a group of three. So that means that remainder R1, instead of writing it as R1, you can write it as one third. And again, one, one anything on its own is all, always one third of a group of three of the same thing. So one thing is one quarter of four things. And one thing is a fifth of five things. Or it's one tenth of ten things and so on. And if you have a remainder of three, three is going to be three quarters of four things, or three fifths of five things, or three tenths of ten things. So really what that means is that whatever the remainder is, you just put it over this number here. So there was a remainder of one here, so that remainder as a fraction, expressed as a fraction, is going to be one over three. So I hope that idea makes sense to you. And if you have any questions about it, please ask. And that's really about it for this lesson, how to express the remainder as a fraction when you're doing short division. And I will see you in the next one.